Now, if you are new to Scratch or you are new to computer coding and this is your first lesson, you're going to have to follow very, very carefully because I'm going to just show you how to set up a Scratch account so that you can make your own game. I would suggest that you guys get to use Scratch, set up an account so that you can also learn Scratch. Now, if you don't know how to set up a Scratch account, do the following. Go to Google. There's some of you who haven't got a Scratch account, so, and type in the following. S-C-R-A-T-C-H, Scratch, and press Enter in Google. Then you'll see you get Scratch, Imagine, Program, Share. Imagine, Program, Share. And you click on there. When you are in Scratch, you're going to find that over here, you'll see it says set up account. Now, the reason why you don't see that in mine is because I've already got Scratch. So you'll find that it doesn't show. If you go sign out, it'll somewhere along here, it'll say join Scratch. Let's get started with today's lesson. When you have set up a Scratch account, if you go create, you're going to make your own project or your own game. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be creating a project, working on that translation program. We're going to arrange these little blocks and there's lots of them. Look, if I go to looks, there's a whole lot sounds and I can scroll down as I showed you yesterday. Look, there's the flag, clicking on the flag. And you can see here it says, clicking on the sprite. If you look at this one, it says, when sprite clicked. So that when I click on that sprite, something will happen. This one says, when the flag is clicked, something will happen. That's a little flag over there. If I go into my, play my game, if I click on the flag, it's going to then do something. These are the events, clicking on the flag, and we're going to also do when clicking on the sprite. This is the sprite. We call him Scratch Cat. We mentioned that these are called code blocks. They show the logic. Now, logic is an amazing word. It just means that everything has to fit together to make it work. So everything fits together in a special way to make your program work properly. If your program is not logically set out and systematically set out in the proper way, things won't work right. And then you'll have to go into looking for the mistakes, the errors. That's called debugging. Now, I showed you yesterday this backdrop. If you want to change the background to Scratch Cat, you go over here. It says choose a backdrop. Click on that. Let's have a look at underwater. You've got space, indoors, outdoors. Look, there's underwater scenes. I think we'll go with an underwater scene like that. So if I look at my program, it looks pretty good. Scratch cat underwater. Not quite what a cat would be found underwater, but this is make-believe. I'm going to keep my scratch cat. So this is called, what did we call this part? The coding area. This is where you write your code. We write our code here, and this is where the interface where we see the stage, where our, our Scratch Cat, everyone with me at this stage. What do we call Scratch Cat? He's called a sprite. Um, a sprite, he's the little object we're using for our game. Okay, and we've got this backdrop, which is the underwater scene. What did we use yesterday? I think it was a space scene. We'll start off with today's with a trigger. And once again, we're using the clicking on the flag trigger. So when you click on that flag, the game starts. Trigger. So when we click on the green flag, our sprite will start his translation into Zulu. So this, is, this sprite is going to be translating into Zulu. Now, we don't want to do what we did yesterday. We want to have that our translation is going to be remembered. Why do your teachers give you exams? They want to see if you can remember the information. 
Now, our scratch cat in yesterday's program just said the Zulu word, but it didn't remember it. Machines start being able to learn. And we want our scratch cat to learn what we teach it. So watch what we're going to do, because learning is going to become part of it. So first of all, we're going to look for a control, the loop. So we're going to go to controls. And Matthew, what loop do we always mention? The forever loop. Last year, I used to get so stuck, and Matthew always helped me out with that one. So if you ask, we're going to ask a question. We're going to ask a question about what do you want in Zulu? In Zulu. And we'll put a question mark. So our, on the click, our scratch cat, our sprite, is going to ask. Look there. What do you want in Zulu? And we'll type something in this. What is this called? The input box. So something's going to be typed in there. What do you want in Zulu? We're going to move our scratch cat a little bit up. So that the input box doesn't cover the scratch cat. If we put him over there, look, you know, it doesn't look so good. But if we put him over there, then it says it's a little bit clearer. Now we're going to go to the next step. We're going to go to looks. And we're going to say something. And we're going to say over here, we're going to get our scratch cat to say something in Zulu. Now, if you want to get the Zulu translation, we have to get an extension. Now, boys and girls, the Scratch Cat is going to say the Zulu words. The Scratch Cat will now say the Zulu words. How do we do that? Look at this. Add extension. And this is new. To the upgrade of Scratch has got this extension. And we choose Translate. Now, what we're going to do over here is we're going to bring in this. We're going to translate the answer to Zulu. It's choose Zulu already. If I go on that little drop-down box, look over there. I'm clicking on the drop-down. Translate. How did I get this translate? Click on the extension. There's the translate. Click on the drop-down box. Look for what language? Zulu. We want to impress Mr. Maho, and we want to impress some of the Zulu teachers that we can do this. So now we're going to bring that in over here. And whatever was typed in this input box, whatever we typed here, must be translated to Zulu. Are you all with me at this stage? And then we're going to use what's called a list box to remember. Remember I talked about intelligence? We want our computer to remember we don't want our computer to just do it for a few seconds and then forget what it learned. We must have it remembering. So we all know what would we use to store data. The list. Good. We're going to create two lists. And we're going to put items in the list. So we're going to add items to the list. So let's go back. And we go back to sensing. And we look over here. It says answer. I'm going to bring... Translate answer to Zulu. And then we're going to put a list where we're going to keep the answer in it. So I'll show you that in a second. Just want to put this over there. We are now translating the answer to Zulu. And now we're going to do something that you guys haven't seen yet. You need to watch this. We're going to bring in a list. Now, to find a list... Boys and girls, it's like a variable, but a list, you can collect a whole lot of information. I'm going to go over here where it says make list. Click on variables. Now, when you ask, when you hear a teacher, a computer teacher talk about variables, they're talking about something that the computer will remember. Now, most variables are short-term memory, but we're going to put it into a list so our computer can constantly collect Zulu words. So the first thing we're going to go, make list. It says new list. I'm going to call this Zulu. Zulu. And we'll make it okay. We've got Zulu. 
And Matthew's looking as if we need to make a list for English because we want the English and the Zulu. So we're going to go and make another list, English. That'll be the English word. And the other one will be the Zulu words. So look over here. I'll put this side over here. All the English words are going to go in here. All the Zulu words will go in there. And we'll just move Scratch Cat a little bit over. So we're going to have the Zulu word and the English word there. You may swap them around. You can put these, the English, this side. Just drag it and you can move them as you see appropriate. Now we're going to go to the next step. When you go and activate your game, it says, what do you want in Zulu? So I'm going to type in, how are you? And as soon as I type in, how are you? I want it to go into the, how are you? Is English. It must be written here. How are you? And the Zulu for how are you must be written in there. So we're going to be the Zulu and the English. Okay, so let's go out of this. Go over there. Make it smaller. Getting the computer to learn Zulu words and the English word. Add. Look over here. It says add thing to English. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add it to the Zulu section. So we're going to bring this in over here. We're going to add and I'm going to duplicate answer. I'm going to add answer. No, that's wrong. I'm going to add, duplicate this. That bit of code. I'm going to add the answer. Translating the answer to Zulu to in, in the Zulu part. So the Zulu list. Add the Zulu words. If I add to the English list, I just want answer. So watch, I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to duplicate answer. That must go to the English list. So what happens when I add, what do you want in Zulu? It's going to say the word in Zulu. Then it's going to add, it's going to add the Zulu words to the Zulu list. Then it's going to add the answer to the English list. You'll see all the watch. We're going to go over here. Click on the flag. It says, what do you want in Zulu? I'm going to type, you are the best coders on the planet. And we press the tick over here. And look, he says, what do you want in Zulu? And the Zulu word is written over there. Unfortunately, he hasn't said the word in Zulu, which I'm going to make him do now. So we ask and he must say, the word in Zulu, and then I'm going to make him wait a few seconds. Control. Let's make him wait five seconds. He's going to say the word in Zulu, then he's going to add it to the list. Let's show you guys that again. Okay, I'm going to add another word. So I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to write, Craig is visiting his old school. And I'll put a full stop at the end of that. To try to be as correct as possible. Five seconds. Look. Ukraig, uvakasha lela, isikoleni, sake. Okay. It went a bit fast. But look, there's the word in English. And there's the Zulu. Our scratch cat is learning. Can you see? He's learning. He's got two things he's know he knows already. So we are actually teaching the computer. It's going and our scratch cat is learning. Maybe we could make it eight seconds while he shows the Zulu word. I could bring this out. This is actually not the best way of doing it. But if I go like that and I just want to move this away and I put that over there. Look over here. It says show, say for two seconds. So I'm going to make him just say, think the word. I don't, I'm going to go like that. Take out this hello. He's going to go and say the translated word for six seconds. Let's see how it works. I'll do another one. Click on there. What is your name in Zulu? We want to know. What is your name? And I'm going to click over there. Ubani Igama Lako. Ubani Igama Lako. What is your name written in English? And then Ubani Igamalako is written in there. We've taught our scratch cat three words. Three things. English and the Zulu. So he's getting more and more smart. Right. Now we're going to go to something else. 
We're going to now go. We want the scratch cat to teach us. So we're going to now make that every time you click on the scratch cat, he's going to tell you something. We're going to go to events. And when the sprite is clicked, so go over here. When we click on our scratch cat, we're going to set a variable that one of the list. So look over here, variable. And we're going to make a variable. So I'm going to call this item number. And I'm going to call it item number. So guys, you're making a variable. Now let me explain what a variable is. That's telling you which item must be read in the list. When we click on Scratch Cat, so now it's going to go set. We're going to go to the variables and we're going to go down here to the list. He's going to teach us stuff. We've been teaching Scratch Cat. Scratch Cat. Whenever we click on him, he's going to teach us something. Variable, set, item number. I'm going to go like that. Set item number to one of the length, a random number. So we're going to go to a number over here, random. Oh, there's a random number. So it's going to pick a random number. Now you're asking the computer to choose. In other words, you don't choose what it's going to teach you. All right, just going to make it a bit smaller. So when Scratch Cat teaches you, he must choose, not you. So we're going to go back to our variables. Look over here, it says item 1, and we must get the length of the list. So we have to get item, length of the list. So item something of, we're going to go bring that in, item, and then we're going to pick a random number of 1, 2, item number, length of, and we'll start with the English list. So it's going to choose item number is a random number. Sorry, guys, I'm going to have to move this. The length of the list will go over there, and it goes in there. That's right. Now, look at that. So item number is going to be one of the members of the list of English words. So item number is one of the English words. Almost finished, guys. And we're going to say... And because remember, our scratch cat's teaching us now. He's going to say that whatever is in there. He's going to say, and we're going to do a join. We're going to join. And we're going to put it over here. And we're going to say, let me show you the Zulu translation of. And then we're going to put a space. And then it's going to go to item of the list. Just going to move down. Item. I'm going to bring that in over there. And I'm going to bring item number. I'm going to bring in item number, which is variables. So I'm going to drag this. Look over here. Item number of English. So he's going to say that. Let's test it, our code. So if we click on Scratch Cat, he's going to start teaching us. Click on him. He says, let me show you the translation of... I'm going to just move him out of the way because you can't see it so good. That's a bit better. Click on him. He says, let me show you the Zulu translation of Craig is... It's going away too quickly. We'll just make it... I'm just going to go and I'm going to choose say this one. I think Matthew was thinking that we must put that one. Because this one will, oh, I did have the same one. Uh, I just want to make that I can make this say something for a longer period of time. We'll make it six seconds. So he says, let's just show you how it works. Look at how we click on Scratch Cat. Let me show you the Zulu translation of what is your name. If I click on him again, let me show you the Zulu translation of you are the best coders on the planet. If I click on him again, he says, Craig is visiting our old school. So he's, he's, he's saying, let me show you something every time. Now we're going to go to the last bit. And here we're going to bring in just the Zulu word. Hey, So we're going to bring in, I don't think we need this join. We can take the join out and we can just say the Zulu word. 
So we're going to go item number, say item number of Zulu. And that should be correct. Now let's see if, the, if he's going to teach us something. Now we're going to test our code. Everything should be finished and we're ready to test it. Let's add in clicking on the flag and watch. We're going to add another Zulu word. If I say my house is painted green. And then I'll just put a full stop. It's going to put my house is painted green in the Zulu. Unglu yami ifakwe elo klaza. So look, it's adding it in. My house is painted green. And here it's got the Zulu word. Now let's get him to teach us something. Now if, where do we get him to teach us? Click on the... F let me show you the Zulu tra translation of what is your name. And then he says, Ubani ikamalako. Let's go another one. My house is painted green. He's going to show us the Zulu word. Watch, it's coming. Intlu yami ifakwe ele kuklaza. Then he says, my house is painted green. I remember Ingwani flakwaza. Let's see. Uh, you are the best coders in the planet. Watch, he's going to tell you the Zulu. It's coming. Nguwa amakodi apapile implabani. Okay, guys, my Zulu is terrible. I've never done Zulu in my life. But what you've got is your scratch cat can teach you. It says, what do you want? It asks a question. And then we translate that into Zulu. We add that to the list. Remember, the list is where our memory is kept, where our scratch cat is remembering the items, an English item and a Zulu item. Then we go to where the cat can actually teach us. And that means we click on the cat, and then the cat chooses a random number in the list, and that random number then says whatever is in Zulu and also says it in English. I'm going to make it big so you guys can see it very clearly, and then you can copy it and make this game. I'll just see if I can make it a little bit bigger. If you are struggling and don't know what to do, I'll come around and help you. Thank you for listening, boys and girls. We appreciate what you've done. Watch the video. If you don't understand it, go over it because this is powerful stuff. I don't think any primary school has ever done a lesson like this. And this is something that we can build on. And you could even build a program that you could use for your exams. Pretty smart. Zulu. Translator. And then I go shared. I share it. I save it. And it's already shared. So it says shared. I just want to see the pro see the project page. Zulu Translator. And it says here a program that translates and teaches you Zulu words. Done by Brian Evan Coding Group. Mr. Bradley and Matthew and Matthew and we'll say Mohammed. So let's just go and add to studio. I don't know. I've never tried that. Okay. And we can save it. And guys can see if you type in Zulu Translator and you can get, my, you can get hold of our project. Post. Add to studio. Okay, this should take us then to a project that's shareable. It means any other person in Scratch should be able to access our project. You'll see it'll be listed like all of these other ones with their icons. They'll be able to just type in the search box and find our Zulu project. And when they find it, they will be able to then look at our code and it'll assist them to be able to improve their abilities in Scratch. So we are basically sharing our project with everybody else. And I'm sure this can help you to understand why Scratch is such a good program for learning to pro for, for, for learning computer code, because everybody's sharing in it together. You can see all these projects over here. Boys and girls, I think we'll call this a day. Thank you so much for all your assistance and for being such a marvelous group. We truly appreciate all of your enthusiasm, and we hope that you will continue to be like this. 
just going to fiddle a little bit more. You can see there's the Google Translate icon. So if I click on that, you can see there's a whole range of different projects that are using that. And you can see Scratch has changed quite remarkably. You can go back. And if I type in Zulu Translator, it should take us exactly to our project. And we should be able to find it. There we go. It's right there in front of us, easily accessible. I'd like to thank all our subscribers and urge you all to watch the videos and to promote our videos as much as possible so that we can promote what we are doing in these coding classes.